few years ago, I built my kids a ping pong table for Christmas. And I also built them this ping pong paddle and ball holder. And I'm gonna build another one today. This one's gonna be a little bit different in that I have to change the sizing because I'm working off a piece of plywood that I've had here in the shop. This is one of a few random pieces of plywood that a friend who's a boat builder gave me years ago. This is teak and willow. And the main reason for the change is I want the reveal between the edge of the frame and the willow to be the same. So I'm going to get started by measuring from the edge of the willow here to the edge of the plywood and making that same cut on this side of the plywood. Once I've got the backer to the, the paddle holder cut the size, then I'll start building around it. If you want to build this project, I will have a drawing and a cut list that you can find on my website. And when I finish with this project, I'm going to put it in my store. And if you want to check that out, I'll have a link in the description. So let's go ahead and get started by first cutting the back to size. Now that I've got the back cut to size, I'm going to move on to the holders that hold the paddles. And I'm going to use a piece of quarter inch plywood and trace one of the holders to make a pattern. The first measurement is two inches and I have a piece of sapele here that's just a little bit heavier than two inches. So I'll first rip this at two, then flip it over and resaw it at a half of an inch. This will be enough material for all four parts. When I ripped the block of sapelia at two inches, I also ripped the pattern at two inches, and next I'll make this cut in the pattern, which is a 16 degree angle. Now I'm making another cut on the pattern. This is a zero degree angle at the bottom of the paddle holder. And for this cut, I'll use the bandsaw. And so now I've measured up four and three quarters of an inch. I'm using a piece of tape and when I attach the paddle holders to the back, I'll make sure that the bottom of the holder is resting on that tape. And I've also drilled holes in the front of the, the back here. And now I'm going to countersink those holes. The plan is to epoxy the ping pong paddle holders to the front, let the epoxy set up, and then for a little extra strength, I'll attach each holder with two screws from behind. I used the willow inlay to line up the holders. This wasn't really planned, it just happened to work out. The distance between the holders is exactly an inch and three eighths. While the epoxy is setting up, I'll get to work on the frame. The first step in making the frame is to cut a rabbit in the back of the frame. I'll use the table saw and make this cut first. When I make the first cut, I want to be a little below the line and I'll clean up the joint on the second cut. Well, I don't know how I did this, but the molding that I made is a little bit too short. So what I'm going to do is just take a little bit off the bottom and a little bit off the top.
Well, it's the next day and I let the glue and the miters set up overnight. And now I'm going to cut slots in the corner of the frame for splines. And I should add that when I was building the frame, I kept the nails high and low so I could add the splines in the center. Also, this plywood is teak and holly, not teak and willow. So if you're looking for this plywood online, search for teak and holly. While the glue's setting up in the splines in the frame, I'm gonna move on to the shelf that will hold the ping pong balls. And I'm starting with a piece of cherry that measures an inch and a half wide by 13 inches long. I'll attach this to the back with the bottom of the shelf two inches up from the bottom of the plywood and center. Now I'll trim the shelf out with a piece of Sapili molding that I made with the table saw and the router. The molding measures an inch and an eighth by five sixteenths and has a slight round over on the front. The very last thing I did was attach a French cleat to the back, and that will make sure that this always hangs nice and level. If you have any questions on the project, leave them in the comments, and I'll do a follow-up video next week. If you enjoyed the video, please share it on your social media. That really helps me to build my audience, and with a bigger audience, I can start working on bigger projects. Also, if you want to make this, I will have a drawing and a cut list that you can find on my website. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you soon.